Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Studio Chat podcast today. I'm going to let my guest introduce herself. Um, her name is Michelle. She's from Boob Accessory Solutions. And the reason why I'm going to get her to introduce herself today is because her why and her purpose and her business has such a personal tie and meaning to it. And I, I think it's going to be such a beautiful way for you to say in your own words, Michelle, uh, a bit about your business, Boob Accessory Solutions, a bit about you and how you started your business. Hi, good morning, Barbara. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on. So my name is Michelle Salipo and I started my business, Boob Accessory Solutions, uh, three years ago now. It's coming up on three years, but uh, that's the, the date that I registered the business name. So I registered the business name first and then you start making the business after that. So the first year was mostly uh getting ready, getting set up, getting all my trademarks in and um, really sorting out what my product was was going to be and uh, how I was going to get it made, where I was going to get it made and all that. So that was really the first year. So you could say that I've been in business for two years now, really, since the product's been to market. Yeah. So the relations, because, yeah, it's it's difficult to – you have an idea and to follow through that process, it takes, you know, someone with gusto and someone with drive to just start a business. Yeah, that's right. So the business, I um, I had a problem that I wanted to solve for myself, which was how to wear my favourite bras with racerback tops. So as you can see at the moment, I've got a good old Freddie racerback top on. Oh, and yeah. I've got a normal bra underneath it. I'm not sure if you can see any bra straps there, but I've just got yes. my normal bra underneath it. And I invented the the boob clip because I was sick of the paper clip from the from the study and it wasn't really doing the job. <laughs> and I knew there were there were some other little clips out there. There was um little plastic clips that really brought the bra straps too close together. And then I just started having this dream that I was going to invent this boob clip. I didn't know what it was going to be at the start. And then at the same time, coincidentally, my friend Vanessa started um, going through a health journey with breast cancer and um, going going with her and seeing all of her struggles of, of how much she didn't feel supported with, um, you know, the nurses and the doctors and everything, it just made sense to me that I should be creating the boob clip that will help that situation and and put money towards making it better for women that are that are going through breast cancer and making them feel more supported. I mean, my boob clip invention, this is it here, a neat little tiny little clip that brings the bra straps together at the back to convert them to racer backs. Um, how this little clip, you know, supports boobs but can also support the women that are going through breast cancer so luckily thank goodness my friend Vanessa is clear of all of her breast cancer now it's been a long time though like it didn't um so in that first year that I was setting up my business she was going through all of her breast cancer treatment and I was there with her through the whole thing and then um, even the, the second year, she was still going through treatment. Like breast cancer takes at least two years to get clear of it, if you're lucky. Like thankfully, thankfully she was lucky. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so that's how I started. That was my why. That's the reason why I'm giving back to the McGrath Foundation and, and um, yeah, the reason why I invented the, the boob clip to start with because, you know, I like my boobs sitting up and, you know, in the right spot and don't have to deal with pesky bra straps slipping off everywhere. That was my why. I love that. And anyone that can't, I'll add some photos into when we release this episode so people can actually see what it looks like. It's actually the word boob and yeah. clip as well. Yeah, so the front thing is reversed so that uh, the, the bra straps go in either side. I've got some videos that I've done quite a while ago now, like, yeah, two years ago, three years ago now. Um, and I do intend on making more content. I get lots of emails from people saying, ah, fix your Instagram, fix this, fix that. You know, I'm like, yes, I will be making better videos soon. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, uh, and, and you're in the infancy stage too, but it's so exciting. You mentioned that you're, 
business is trademarked and registered um, in four countries. So that's Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and USA. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, first you go ahead and get it done in Australia, and then you have the opportunity um, through the trademark website to um, then progress it on further to other countries. And I've just obviously chosen the countries that are English speaking to start with and the main countries that um, I know, of course. <laughs> uh, I've actually lived in the UK for two years and um, my parents are from New Zealand and uh, USA, I haven't been there yet, but I know lots of people that live there and, um, you know, just through the internet. And yeah. so... I have yeah. a lot of um, followers and listeners on from the states here, so um, they're going to enjoy this. So you just mentioned too um, that you are in partnership with um, the McGrath Foundation. Can you oh, tell sure. us a little bit more about? Because uh, it's interesting that I think people listening to this podcast is kind of a couple of avenues. It's someone that maybe want to start it maybe wanting to start a business and has an idea, uh, someone that may be going through breast cancer themselves or maybe someone that knows someone. Um, so I'd love, yeah, you to share with me a bit about your partnership with the McGrath Foundation and what it's all about. Uh, so with the McGrath Foundation, they're, they're Australian-based and it's from Jane McGrath's um, journey with breast cancer. Unfortunately, her... Um, her journey didn't end well and she is now gone. But um, her husband and the children, uh, well, they all started the foundation together, the McGrath Foundation. And um, Glenn and the kids uh, still continue it today and Jane's best friends and everybody. So um, it was actually, it was very easy to join up with them and partnership with them. They've, they've um, got a, um, a case manager that takes care of me, the lovely Christina. And the the way that um, I approached them and then they got me on board straight away and it didn't matter even that I hadn't even started the business yet and I hadn't even started making money because um, they take donations from everybody. So uh, it was the best decision I'd made to join up with them straight away. And that way I know that, you know, even if, if it's a small percentage, it's still going towards the McGrath Foundation and now we're um, three years in and I've got myself a little um, shirt that I wear. I wear that when I do the market stalls and everything. Oh, it's way too hot up here in our um, Queensland summer to wear it today. But um, that's my little shirt that I got embroidered. I love it. It looks great. And that pink colour just stands out as well. Because the McGrath Foundation is all about uh, when someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, they're assigned a breast care nurse and that nurse follows them right through the journey, don't they? Yes. And when I first started, actually, we didn't have any breast care nurses here on the Gold Coast. So uh, the main two hospitals that my friend Vanessa was going to was Rabina and also the Gold Coast University Hospital. Mm -hmm. And they did have nurses, but no, uh, dedic none dedicated to breast care. And also uh, they were very short staff. So it would take sometimes like uh, three to four days or even a week for Vanessa to get any kind of questions answered. Um, they would have nurses there, but sometimes they wouldn't know the answers straight away if she was seeing them in person and then they would have to get back to her and then, yeah, it would take them three or four days. Like, of course, they cared, but they just didn't have the resources. And now we've got three breast care nurses at Gold Coast University Hospital, so it's fantastic. Oh, great. And long may it continue in that grow as well. It's yes, yes. Their yeah. goal of reaching um, 250 nurses by the end of this year. Okay, so then you guys. Yep. Yes. Yeah, definitely donate what you can. Um, yeah. What you do is it's just, it's a real inspiration. Not only is a product that it's actually handy to use. I mean, how many of us have a favorite bra that we want to wear all the time? And the yeah. fact that we don't need to go out and buy another one and that your clip converts it. Yes. Uh, even with sports bras at the same time, you know, it's not just a normal bra. It can be a sports bra that can be converted into a, a racer pack as well. Yeah, yeah. With the sports bras, I found that a lot of them do have the racer back ability already, but um, they are very um, 
pressing on you and they make you very flat, of course, to stop the bounce while you're doing the sport. But uh, you don't want that in everyday life. You'd like the lift. Exactly. exactly. Before we leave the McGrath Foundation, I uh, just wanted to point out that it's 50 cents from the sale of every two pack that I give to the McGrath Foundation. And also I have this new product here, Barbara. Have a look at this. This is called the Stress Boo. Wow, that's a so boo. It's just a fidget toy, a fun fidget toy. And it can actually also be used as a little breast implant if you've had mastectomy and you want to have an extra um, boob on that side that you've had the mastectomy on just to keep everything symmetrical. But mainly just a fun fidget toy and I'm giving $1 from every sale of these stress boobs to the McGrath Foundation for January. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out that, yeah, that's what I'm – that's the – the money side of things that's going towards the foundation. I love that. And you also have a pink number plate that actually says um, bra clip on it, and it, but it's a, it's like a hot pink number plate. Yes, yes. So the, the plan is to to finish doing all the signage for my, for my truck, my wild track, and have boob accessory solutions on there. So it does make sense. But at the moment I get quite a few looks from having just bra clip on my number clip, on my number plate. Um, <laughs> I actually, Barbara, this is so funny. I tried to get boob clip and I tried so hard to get the word boob on my number plate, but they would not accept it. I really wanted to get boob clip because that's the name of my product, boob yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway, bra clip is the same thing, really. <laughs> it is. Have you had anyone funny looks or does anyone yell out something and go, what is your number plate for? I I get quite a few looks and yeah, it. It's a bit puzzling when I don't have my whole logo on there, but um, yeah, very this year I only just got the truck last year, so at the end of yeah. last year, so it's gonna have proper signage. It's not gonna look as good as a Barbie truck, but um, hopefully. <laughs> oh, and I just love the number plate; it just really uh, stood out. So, before we talk about boobs and health of boobs and boob checks and all that and boob stuff, I'd love to just hear from your side of things of being the support person for someone going through breast cancer. Um, can you share with my listeners a bit about what it was like to be in your shoes and helping your friend through that? Yeah. So uh, Vanessa was getting, um, she was getting weekly chemo treatments at one stage and I was there every week because I used to be a remedial massage therapist as well. So I would just give her not remedial massage. She didn't need anything deep. She just needed just relaxation, relaxation massage and um, basically just someone to talk to. Mm. So um, most of the time, even though she was relaxing, generally during the end of the treatment, she was more quiet. But at the start of the treatment, she just let me know how she was going, how, uh, what, you know, what drugs she was on and how it was affecting her and everything and yeah of course her frustrations about the nurses at the time this was in um 2001 so uh, sorry 2021 oh my gosh okay. yeah 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 time is going. <laughs> now we're in 2024 so yeah i know in 2021 that's when um she started going through all of her treatment okay. and um basically i was really like obviously helping her with a massage but just an ear to listen and um yeah it's it's hard because her whole life was turned upside down. Like she couldn't work for a long time. They were sorting out different ways they could save money. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a big thing to go through, massive. Like and especially the the fact that it takes two years. Like it doesn't even you're not even like done after a month or two. It's yeah, fully two years and. She actually, the thing that helped her get through it was she was planning this trip that she's only just started going on with her family. So during the whole time, the the thing that helped her a lot was obviously um, being able to chat with somebody, but having something to look forward to. So she had this trip she was starting to plan back then in 2021, wow. and they only just left yesterday. Oh, where are they off to? First, they're heading down to Kempsey to drop off her car to her brothers, and then um, they're all going to be in the in their their car with the camper van on the back and just traveling around Australia indefinitely. Perfect way. I think that's 
it's sort of been tough for Vanessa and her family and for you and for anyone, again, that is quite new to breast cancer, doesn't know anyone that's had it or anything. How long does a chemotherapy treatment take for one procedure? Oh, it's not, it's not that long, but it's the, the travel to the hospital, the sorting out the parking, waiting in there. Sometimes you're waiting in there and things don't go to plan. So you're waiting a bit longer than you would expect to wait. And then, yeah, you just, you're just having to like plan your whole life around it. And the fact that it's um, like not just one, you've got it every week and you don't just have that appointment. You've got appointments with doctors, you've got um, you know, you've got a massive new schedule that you have to fit in and work around. So I'm not exactly sure each how much each treatment is on the chemo, but there's also the the downtime. You don't feel so well afterwards, and you're not obviously able to do anything afterwards. So yeah, it's yeah. it's two years. It's a long <laughs> time. But I, I was under the impression that um when they are, do get hooked up and have chemo that they're sitting there for a few hours while it runs through their body um, and just having to sit there and having the support there as well. It's it's just, it's a, I think it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. yeah. Like, is this going to work? What's it going to be like? What's it going to feel like? That's where all their questions come from. Yeah. I was not in any of her chemo treatments. Um, I was more like, you know, the the weekly massage support sort of thing. So I'm not sure exactly how long each one took. Um, I did go to a radiation treatment, like in her, her second stage after the mastectomies, um, she had radiation. Well, she had it before that. And then um, after that really targeted radiation treatment, and I did go along to one of those ones. And um, I went to the last one where she got to ring the bell and say, yay, it's the end of this bloody stupid radiation treatment. And um, yeah, I was so glad she asked me to come to that one with her. Wow, what a memorable, what a proud, memorable, tough, you know what I mean? It would have been a lot of mixed emotions in that, in that time. I think anyone listening to this will know someone that's had breast cancer. And some people yeah. that... Um, I've got it on personally, uh, my grandmother who I'm named after passed away from it. And in that generation, I think it's important that we talk about it. And her story was back in those days, she did feel a lump and no one talked about their bodies. And she was only in her early fifties when she passed away. And I know my Nana, from what I know, cause I was very young, but from what I know that she felt it and was like, Oh, that's a bit scary and left it. No. And to the side of that it was really big because that generation was, oh, I'm a bit scared of the doctors. I might just go away. Mm. So fearful. And then when she did get checked out, it had got to the point where she was only here for a few weeks and then she passed. So um That's and so sad, Barbara. I yeah. think um the biggest takeaway from that is that uh you do need to go see a doctor. And get a referral for a mammogram or an ultrasound or whatever it needs to be. I mean, we're well set up these days for early detection. And that's the best thing. The best thing to do for yourself is whatever you feel, go and get it checked out. Yep. Yeah. And then so because I'm so vigilant with that. So my personal story was um, my dad's sister and my mum's sister have both had it and have both recovered. So I've got very strong genes on either side. And so I've been very vigilant with checking myself at a certain time of the month, every time, always just checking, looking, always looking at my boobs. I always moisturize my boobs too. Some people think that's really weird, but I, I love moisturizing yeah. my boobs and my nipple and stuff because at the same time, not only am I like caring for myself, but I'm actually like checking things, making sure it feels good. And I don't mean that in a sexual way, but, you know, making yeah, sure yeah. that it feels. And then, so I've done that since I've been in my 20s, but uh, I would uh, I got married when I was uh, 30. And I would say about four weeks before my wedding, um, I always, I felt a bit of a lump. Yeah. And so I went to my GP and uh, obviously she got me to lie down and put my hand above my head. So it was a different position that I, to that point, I wasn't checking like that. I was checking kind of with my arm down and then yeah, yeah. got me to lay like that. And she said, 
she, what I was concerned about, she was like, oh, yes, 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 but, and that word but was, oh, but there's something on the other side. And I was like, huh, what? Miss, I'm, I didn't know that there was something there. And so she said, um, we're going to, with your family history, we're going to send you for an ultrasound. And yeah. so I went on to the ultrasound. They don't muck around. It was great. Went for the ultrasound. And you know, it's never good when the lady was doing it was like, oh, do you mind if, it? she said, um, never forget it do you mind if a male doctor comes in? And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, all right. And he came and looked and he said, look, we've found something. Um, we're going to have to do a biopsy. And I had only told my fiance, I hadn't told anyone else. And I was getting married in like four weeks. And my dress was like a strapless um, kind of neck. And he said, I'm just concerned with your bruising and stuff. And I was like, oh, well, it, it is what it is, right? Like, you That's gotta... what makeup's for, mate. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but he was really concerned. He's like, I'm really sorry, but we're going to, um, can you come back tomorrow for a biopsy? And mm -hmm. and we're really, it might you might come out massive bruising. And I didn't want anyone to know and went back and had the biopsy and stuff. And then it came back that I just have what most women have is uh, fibra myalgia or something it's the lumpy tissue in the breast oh yeah yeah it wasn't uh cancer or anything but it was just lumps and yeah. it educated me so I always check and I've been um so I'm 43 and I've already been for a mammogram my first mammogram like I I just pushed for it and said I just want to go for one now and it was easy the ladies were nice it didn't hurt it was just a bit weird. Like, you know, your boob gets a little bit squished. Um, and how long did it take for you to get your results? Oh, within a day. It was pretty quick. A day. Wow. I think mine yeah. took a week. I got a mammogram. Um, oh, I think it was in 22. I got a, a mammogram and I think it took a week. And that that was the longest week <laughs> ever. I'm like, ah. But, well, um, I say a day. Like, goodness knows. It, it wasn't long. Let's say that. I don't want to. Yeah put pressure on how come Barbara gets hers in a day and we all have to wait for a week yeah. I actually can't remember but it was it was quick yes. um but to oh, this day really. always checking um so one of the things that for anyone listening to this because I think it's important we do talk about we're talking about boobs so this yes. is the moment to talk about boob health and stuff um like what do you do or what do you what would you like to pass on to my listeners about boob health Okay, so for, for the breast checking, I mean, today we've got lots and lots of apps. So there's a, an app for this, an app for that. And actually, someone, bless her, has invented an app for filling your breasts. And this app will actually remind you to fill your breasts and um, give you all the information you need. So it's actually called Feel for Your Life. It's an American app. It's called Feel for Your Life. Oh, the name of the lady is not coming to me right now, but um, yes, yeah, she has been through breast cancer and I totally recommend that. I mean, we we let our phones do a lot for us. We're all very busy and you could say, yes, just do it on the first, but this app gives you so much more information, um, how to do it, uh, you know, when to do it, what to look for. And then if you do feel things, you know, how to follow it up and everything. So yeah, feel for your life app. I recommend that one. Um, also just um, don't be afraid to follow it up. I mean, if, as you said, your grandma, like, you know, she obviously didn't have the resources available. We've got everything available now. Like up here in Queensland, we have breast screen breast screen Queensland excuse my enunciation <laughs> and uh it's it's super easy and free to make appointments oh um over 40 is free to make appointments but I'm sure if you went to your doctor and got a referral if you were younger than 40 that you could figure out a way to get it for free as well if not I'm sure it wouldn't cost too much for peace of mind yeah and um I think they say every two years for a mammogram, but I'm going to think I'm going to go for an ultrasound this year because, you know, as you're feeling around, you're like, is it, isn't no. it? Like maybe Food that screen. could be something. Yeah. And, and as you get older, uh, your boob tissue changes and, and every month, every day yes. you feel your boob and there's something there and then the next day there's not. And it's like it, things move around and it's tissue and it's, um, I think sharing my grandmother's story is that, um, and I think she'd like everyone to know not to be scared. It is scary, 
when yeah. you feel something, it's someone's worst nightmare. No one wants to go through that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I'd like her legacy to be that, yeah, just to get checked and ask the questions because it is something now that you, back in the day, it was you got breast cancer. Oh, no, like that's a terminal, like goodbye. Yeah. But now yeah. there's, it's a lot more, uh, what would you say? What's the word I'm trying to think of? It is treatable and it's um, treatable um, easier if you get it early enough. So the worst, the worst thing you can do is leave it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, with your business, I'd love you to share, like, how do you juggle being a mum and your business and having that trust in yourself to back yourself? Like, yeah, I've got this idea and I'm going to run with it. Well, the idea, I actually had the idea. I kept having dreams that I was going to invent this boob clip. I don't know how or why, but just <laughs> a persistent dream that just kept coming at me. And um, I think um, to the, the way that you need to do it is just to listen to yourself. So I could have just, yes, they just bring out the kids. Actually, my husband and I have a few other businesses as well. But, um, yeah. Uh, we also have a coffee roasting business and um, an arcade building business. And behind here, it's all blurry, but there's like two businesses back there um, in the house as well as the the factory that we have. So, yeah, we're a bit of a crazy family here, but we've got the three kids. And the way I juggle it is um, I make sure to give time for them and plan activities with them so that we have all of our beautiful memories as they're growing up, not just of mum working all the time. And something that's been a godsend for me is my first gym. Have you got my first gyms down yes. there? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, so good. So it's regular exercise for the kids. I've got them in two classes a week. They do like Ninja Warrior and tumbling and parkour and all that sort of stuff. But the parents can sit there make sure their kids are getting exercise and I'm actually working on my business at that time. Mm. So that's how I juggle. Like, yeah, you work it in and around the kids. And um, I think the best thing is that they see that, you know, mummy's making a business or daddy's making a business. You know yeah. what I mean? Like being a good role model, you know, we're contributing to society and we're, obviously bringing in the money to pay all the school fees and the gym fees <laughs> and this that they want and that that they want. You know what I mean? Like making it all work. And the way that I got started was I joined a startup program here on the Gold Coast. So it's called the, um, the one that I went with was the Gold Coast Innovation Hub. Mm -hmm. And I did a course with them. And that was like a weekly meeting and online classes I, that I did through a startup on, on ramp provider. And it's actually provided by the government for free through um, Accelerate Queensland. Mm. So there are things that you can do if you don't have any money, you know, all you need is an idea, find your, your innovation hub in your town and get started. Oh, I love that. Cause I'm hearing that you had an idea and then you actually s looked for support. I did. Yes, actually for sure. I'm like, how the hell am I going to do this? You know, like, and the first, the first person I told, um, a very good friend of mine, Leah, and she said, get that trademarked. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, right, friend. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And what's it when you, cause you do the markets too. So what markets do you do for anyone? I guess it's up in your way. Um, if anyone's listening to this in the, in your area, where can they find you at the markets? Okay, so I did the markets last year. So actually this year now in 2024, I'm not doing markets. I'm just concentrating on wholesale. But the reason why I did the markets was to get the awareness out of, of my product, the boob clip and boob accessory so solutions and what we're doing. So last year I did the art and craft markets on the coast. So they're beachfront markets and they do uh, four different suburbs along the coast. So I did, for the whole year, I did... Um, Cool and Gatta, Burley, Broad Beach, and Paradise Point markets every Sunday. Mm. So I was working last year crazy. I was working six days a week. And um, so I'm going to be doing that differently this year. So at the moment, um, 
You can see me, uh, you, if you want to buy my products, you can buy them from my website online through the Facebook and Instagram. You can go straight onto the website or at boobaccessorysolutions.com. And um, I still also do the Chicks and the Flicks. So um, I go to Kumara Event Cinemas and they have, um, they premiere a movie the night before it comes out and they, it's called Chicks at the Flick, so all the girls go along. And I have just a little market store. I can't sell there, but I can just demonstrate my product and I do a little giveaway and, nice. and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll still be doing that, like, um, yeah, those evenings. I, I might look at some sort of markets this year, but mostly what I want to do is, I wholesale my product to retailers. So I've got a I've got a catalogue. I've got um I designed a spinner which spins around and holds my product like the the hook goes in there and it holds my product. I in, I also invented a storage box that stores all of the boob clips in there. And um yeah, a few other point of sale options so that I can just um hand it over and then I, as the company, do the donation to the McGrath Foundation. Okay. And and then, you know, the retailer just gets their percentage, you know what I mean, depending if they're a wholesaler or a consignment. Well, that's what that's how I want to sell it um, this year. Obviously, I'm moving forward and, you know, in the future when I do different countries as well. The markets were really fantastic, but it's a it's a one-on-one sales. Yeah. Whereas I would really love to spend more time with my kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I 100% get that. What was the, what's the most common thing when people see your product for the first time? What's the most common thing people say to you? Uh, that is so smart. Um, and they're also, um, wow, that's really easy to use because it's super easy. I will do more videos. Um, but there are a couple of videos out there already and it's really, as long as you can reach here, you can pop it on yourself. Yeah. And obviously you put the bra on first and then you attach the clip. Um, yeah, that's that's what they say to me usually like, oh, wow, that's so smart. Mm, it's very clever, very clever. Um, and in saying that, I want to talk about the awards that that you have won. And I want to say congratulations. because. Thank you. I'm just going to read some of them for everyone to understand that when you've got an idea and you back yourself and you do it, because before I go through these awards, were there moments that you were like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Should I keep doing that? Or have you always had this light inside you that's like, oh, I'm unstoppable. I'm going to do this. I do have a vision for the future, but when the bills come in every month, I'm like, how the hell am I going to get there? How, how do I go from from here to there? And, um, you know, I still don't know the exact path, but I know that, you know, you see where you want to go and you're like just keep an eye on the destination. And that's where I want to go. I want the world to know that, you know, this boob clip, it will come in, it will come in many colours, like it will come in pink. It's going to come in endless colours eventually, you know, the black, that the boob clip means that accessory means solutions for boob health so that worldwide it'll be if you use this type of boob clip you know you're donating to your your foundation in your country that's the vision like that I want to to go to still not sure on the path but I'm I'm open to suggestions if you yeah if anyone's listening to this, because everyone around the world listens to this, and you know what it takes is one person, just that one person to listen to it that's got a contact. And I loved how honest you were when you said every month, any business owner would probably be listening to this, not in their head going, I'm exactly the same. When the bills come in, I have a passion project. It's my business. I know where I want to go, but I've got to, you know, I've got to earn money too. Yeah. Uh, and there's that when you're first starting out, there's that, okay, that's what I'm bringing in, but these are my bills. How am I going to get there? And it's such a normal thing that most people can look at a business owner and just go, oh, well, you're doing well. Yes. Yeah. Usually when you find out a, about a business that's doing well, they're like at least three or four years in. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they've been hitting the ground running for like all those years and you've only just heard about them finally when they 
when they do start paying the bills. <laughs> yeah, it's no such thing as an overnight success. It's the work we do as business owners, everyone listening to this, that's behind the scenes. The long days, the early morning starts, the six or seven days working, the relentless ups and downs, the waves. Um, but I want to say, let's talk about these awards. I'm just going to read some of them. So you're the Gold Coast Girls in Business Innovation Award finalist in 2023. Yep. The Gold Coast Girls in Business Awards 2023, celebrating all the local women in business. The Muse, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, Design yeah. Awards, the Fashion Accessory Silver Winner 2022. The Osmumpreneur Product Innovation Award Finalist 2022. Oh my God, I'm going to keep going here, guys. The Osmumpreneur Awards, um, and just if people don't know, it recognizes the best and brightest mums. In business, acknowledging the success in business, product development, innovation, and customer service. Then we move on to Women in Fashion, Long Lunch and Awards Innovation Award winner 2023. And uh, let's have a look here. Then you have been nominated this year for the Heart of Women Awards, which is going to be on the 9th of March. Um, so I'm curious to know, because that's a nomination that's open for you right now. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's happening there yeah so I love I love this one I just want to quickly go um on all of them the first one that I was nominated for uh the Osmanpreneur one so that one was I hadn't even actually heard about awards for women in business anything like this before and that was the first one in 2022 and I was um at first not really sure whether I deserved an award because I was still setting up everything in the business like I obviously had the the boot clip product but I was still developing the point of sales I was still developing you know the different different ranges like you know with the silk scrunchies and I was still developing all my products so I didn't really feel like I deserved an award at that stage um and I only was just a finalist in that so I didn't win any award there but it just opened my eyes to see how supportive the women are in this country that they have actually created all of these awards for women in business that have just decided, hell, I'm going to start a business. Yeah. A crazy bunch of women. <laughs> Goodness me. And thank God they're all here. So, yeah, that was my first one. Um, and Osmanpreneur Awards are huge. They're um, all over Australia, women um, fly to Sydney every year it's also a um, a massive conference as well so they learn from other women that have started businesses and then it's like a three-day event mm. and then the award night is at the end and um, yeah really grateful for, for becoming a finalist in that one and then uh, the Muse Design Awards was fantastic as well that's a that's a worldwide one and like I'm so grateful that I won the silver in that one because the judges obviously just recognise that, hey, this is a out-of-the-box solution for the bra clip and especially being made out of stainless steel instead of a plastic item. And, uh, and then the next one, I was a finalist in the Gold Coast Girls in Business. Um, that was amazing. So that was for the Innovation Award as well. And, um, yeah, it's amazing to see how many businesses are around just just locally just on the gold coast here and i'm sure in your town there's many many mm. um yeah innovative and amazing women that are starting up businesses and then uh the the women in fashion one was so crazy it just at the end of last year i honestly did not expect to win that innovation award in that one because i just thought there's so many beautiful designers out there in the fashion world especially here in in gold coast and brisbane and yeah just so blown away and just amazing like you you have this idea to invent something and you don't realize how much community there is out there for you mm. and um this latest innovation uh, sorry this latest one not even for innovation like for heart, which is which is so close to me, like because that's the whole reason I started this business was to, you know, create solutions, mm -hmm. you know, create accessories that would help, really help women. And um, not just here in this country, but worldwide. And so 
the Harder Women Awards, they've been going for eight years now, and um, it's on the Gold Coast at Hotter in March on the 9th. And uh, it's a charity, it's for a charity called Agape Outreach. And they um, they feed the needy and the homeless, and they they have um, programs for them to help um, skill them up to to look after themselves. And they also have a massive housing project that they're trying to get off the ground here as well. So they they feed the homeless from um, northern New South Wales, um, the Tweed, um, all Gold Coast and Logan. And um, yeah, just a massive bunch of people with heart that are that are really making a difference. And the fact that they have these awards every year just encourages more people to get involved. Yeah, and just by watching your body language, I see the enjoyment of because not often do we, especially as Aussies and Kiwis, we can't talk about our successes. We tend to be like, oh, I don't want to talk about my awards because it looks like I'm up myself. And I love that you we've taken the time to talk about your achievements because yeah. you've worked hard for it and it encourages other women to lift other women up to your level. And when I was just watching your body language at how happy and excited you are, not only about your product but about the awards, but also connecting with other women and networking that most yeah. Most people think women in business, we're competing against each other and we can't help each other, but I don't get that from you. I get that that you love networking and trying to help other businesses. And I think that's where the power is. I'm big on that too, is having a good referral system, having a network of, I can't help you, but here's this or, you know, because that's how business grows by word of mouth. That's the way that I look at um, networking. Like I do, I have been going to quite a few um, networking events when I can, when I've got time, you know, apart from all the businesses. That yeah, when you've got, got time. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't look at it as in um, I'm giving, like it's an effort, you know what I mean? I always look at it as in I'm receiving, like I'm receiving other people's beautiful energy. I'm receiving new information, things that I don't know about, you know, like um, I had no idea how what – how I was going to make my product to start with. And that's when I started going to the GC Innovation Hub has the the um, Female Founders Club. And that's how I met the person who actually makes my product for me. So I, I always look at every opportunity, like every meeting, even with you, as I'm receiving something, I'm receiving, you know, your news, your knowledge, you know, your care, your love, your heart. Mm. That's very special right there. See, that's how connections are made. And that's what I mean. Don't know who someone that knows someone that knows someone. That's all it takes. It's it's, um, you're showing women out there that you can be a mum. You can have it all. You can have an idea. Yeah. And even as scary as it is, you can, uh, uh, very similar to me as in I'm not a mother, but I had an idea for a business and I just kind of did it. And I was like, how am I going to do it? I don't know. Same with this podcast. I, oh, I want to do a podcast. How are you going to do it? I don't know. I'll just, and I mean, make it up as I go along. I don't mean that I don't care about it. It's mean like I'm actually figuring it out. Yes. You never have all the answers, especially with a business. You never like, I have to have all my ducks in a row. I have to have everything figured out. And then I'll start because if we think like that, yeah, you're going to start the business. You're never going to do the thing. I think you need to you need to start here, and you just know that you're starting here, and don't be down on yourself for that. You got you got to start somewhere. So you start here, and then every year you're building. Mm. Every year you're getting that thing done differently. You know, next year you're getting you know that part sorted out. And then maybe in a few years, you might get all the bills paid. <laughs> maybe. I'm hoping to do the same. <laughs> and it's interesting. I don't know about you, but sometimes I look back even on the stuff I did a year ago or two years ago. And I, I mean, I mean this with love, but I, I cringe a little bit and go, oh, because personally I've grown. I've learned more about how to run a business. So I've learned more. Oh, because not everything's going to work. You go down that avenue and go, oh, that didn't work. I only got five leads or only got five clients, but this way I got 50. And so I think any honest business owner will laugh and go, actually, I'm figuring it out as I go. But then if you reach out to a business owner, most of us, I think are quite, Hey, I'll help you. If, if, you know, do you need help with this accounting software or I recommend this person or I recommend that person? 
I think it's important to like, do you have a mentor in business? Like someone that you look up to? Not yet. That's something I need. I'm still in, I'm still looking for one. Yeah. But my mentors come in different, uh, in different areas. So some of it has been, obviously as a counselor, I have to have clinical supervision. So I guess that's kind of a mentor for me. Uh, oh, you know, and then spiritually, I've got someone and then because um, I deal with a lot of people's emotions and people's feelings and people's energy. Um, so actually, let me go back and say, yes, I do have a couple of mentors. It just wasn't yeah. like the business mentor. It yeah, looks- you don't you don't realize that like somebody that you're following that you admire, that's actually your mentor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like plenty of women that I follow that I admire. Yeah, I think I have heaps. <laughs> so Michelle, who is. If we're talking about mentors, who was your mentor? So mine at the start of my business, when I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, was Sarah Blakely. She started Spanx in America. You know, they're those really awesome leggings that come in all different patterns and styles and even like fake leather look and everything. And she started that and that's a, one of the reasons why I actually um, wanted to start giving back at the start because that's what she did when she started her foundation. She started giving back at the start and now she actually um, mentors and helps all, all other women startups as well. Like she has this, um, it's, it's the red backpack where she she has um, everything they need in a red backpack and she gives it to to female founders to help get them going like a startup a startup kit for them and and lots of other things that she does but she can do that she can give back so much now because her company is so well known and I'm just thinking like in the future if if the boob clip and boob accessory solutions become so well known that I will just be on my wildest dreams be able to help and you know, be part of the many, many companies that are trying to end breast cancer right now because there are so many around the world and I, I really want to partner up with a lot of them um, through what I'm doing. Same thing I'm doing with McGrath Foundation in Australia. I want to do that in different countries. So I've already started looking at um, the Dr. Susan Love Foundation. Mm-hmm. So it's um, Dr. Um, the Susan Love Foundation in America. So uh, they do a lot of research and um, they've actually just done a lot of um, stuff with breast imaging and creating a 3D version of the breast. Mm -hmm. And so I want to start selling in America and giving back to that foundation. I've already tried to reach out to them and haven't got any emails back yet, but I'm trying, hoping, hoping I'll just keep trying. I mean, they obviously don't have it set up as easy as McGrath Foundation has, but um, hopefully uh, I will be able to do that. And their mission is to end breast cancer. So well, I love the sound of that mission. And I have yeah. a lot of um, listeners in the States. So anyone of my listeners that you're listening, they've all if got- anyone knows um, Christopher, Christopher Conway, I think his name is. Uh, the CEO of the Dr. Love Foundation. Unfortunately, we lost um, Dr. Susan Love just at the end of last year. She has passed on now. Um, but yeah, if, they, if you don't know anybody else at that foundation, tell them to reply to my emails, please. It's not a joke. My email address, boobus.com.au. Answer my emails, please. Michelle at. <laughs> and keep sending yeah. those emails, Michelle. And keep just keep, keep prodding it keep sending the emails because it will get answered yeah and I need to find uh the McGrath Foundation in New Zealand like you know whichever foundation you have over there that's actually something like got nurses on the ground or doing amazing research or you know giving back to to help women going through breast cancer I need to find that foundation and also in the UK I need to find the the foundation that needs help that would love to partner with me and and bring the boob clip you know to women let's around the world let's let's combine all our contacts and let's get this off the ground so yeah we'll do it so all the best for the 9th of march um i'll definitely be keeping in touch with you and seeing how you go uh because that's the thing is once you're on my podcast I like it I don't want it to be a one-off I want it to be a relationship that we build Um, I would love that so much too thank you yeah no it's my pleasure so 
because my private practice, my counseling private practice is called self-care studio. Self-care is kind of the baseline of everything I do because it means so many things. So I'm curious to know, what does the words self-care mean to you? Self-care to me is, it's not so much, you know, like washing yourself and, you know, making sure that your your body is kept up. I think it's um in the mind. Uh, I actually lived over in uh, in London. I lived in Clapham Junction in London for two years. And the thing that kept me going is the looking forward to the next trip, looking forward to something that you find exciting, that you, you know, your, your, your next big adventure or your next bit of fun. So that's what I always like to do. Of course, you've got to keep your, your body active. And I love going on hikes with the kids and, and keeping everybody really active and in the outdoors. But to have something, I think self-care is something to look forward to and it, um, something that uplifts you, that you are excited about, that is self-care to me so that you don't get kind of stuck down in, obviously, I've got this bill to pay, I've got to clean up that mess, you know, like, oh, I've got to do all the bad jobs, have something in your head that you're always looking forward to in the future. And if you don't have something, plan something. Mm, that's, that's fantastic. I really love the sound of that. And so what do you currently do right now to care for yourself? What's one thing that you do? One thing, well, today I washed my hair. <laughs> I love that. Yes, because it takes a while to wash and blow dry. and <laughs> It does, but if you do it right, it'll last a few days and then you don't have to do it again. <laughs> yes, yeah, especially in your heat, like in your heat too, I oh, imagine yes. like that is just get the hot, I'd have the hot sweats happening. <laughs> it's just so, it's just raining so much all the time that that's one thing that I do that makes me feel better, like a self-care type thing, yeah, the hair. Mm, and how are you affected with all the flooding and stuff? Were you guys affected at all? Oh, we're lucky that we're actually on top of a hill here. Like we're, we're um, so I live between Narang and Highland Park and Highland Park is like a really hilly area. So I'm actually like up the hill quite a bit. So luckily not in any rainy um, flood affected areas, but there are quite a few areas that are affected with with rain and we had lots of storms here over Christmas and lots of people had power outages as well. So that's been a big struggle for people here at the moment. Um, luckily, like I I feel like we were thinking about moving um, to um, a more rural area and stuff like that. But now that we're just counting our blessings that we're here because we've actually been lucky, I think we're actually on the same power grid as a um, an ambulance station. So I think we're lucky that we, if it did lose power, it was only very briefly and we got back on again. So, you know, sometimes you, you've just got to be happy with where you are, mm -hmm. you know, and be grateful, like <laughs> mm. super grateful that I'm in this spot where we didn't lose power, we're not getting flooded. Yeah, yeah. Your, your storms are next level. It's interesting when yeah. I moved to, when I moved to Australia, people would look at me weird because even I'm I'm on the south coast of New South Wales. But when you have storms, like I'm talking in Australia, when you guys have storms or lightning storms or thunderstorms, it's a storm. And I used to say to people, I still do. Oh my god! And people were like, smart. Oh, don't you have storms in New Zealand? Or don't you have thunder in New Zealand? I'm like, of course we do. But here it just seems a lot more aggressive and it's quite yeah. and it's quite scary to be fair there was actually it was actually a tornado that went through um like um Coomera and out to sea all through that area and um yeah just so much destruction luckily my friend Vanessa had just sold her house and um it spared her house but um three trees like around her house came down and they all fell away from the house wow look such at a that. miracle like the ones yeah. that are like right on her front right on her front and then at the side they all fell away from the house so mm. bless thank god yeah thank <laughs> goodness yeah that woman's yeah. been through enough leave her alone now <laughs> yes yes i'm like just picturing her like, go on your journey without any dramas like don't yeah. have anything fall on the on the um caravan don't have anything fall on a car don't have a tree fall on your house and she's gone she's out of here she left um yesterday morning so 
Oh, thank uh, God. She's she's done all of her. It's been three years now since she started her cancer journey because she started it at the start of 2021. Yeah. So, um, yeah, now it's the start of 2024 and she's free and clear of it and finally on the road with her family travelling around Australia. What beautiful memories. I'm so glad to hear that she's well and that she's doing okay. So that's, you know, shout out to her that, you know, I'm she- actually I'm actually going to be following her journey because she's going to let me know whenever she stops to wash her clothes at a laundromat, she's going to um, let me know so I can put a little pin in a map and say, this is where you are this time, you know. Oh, that's such a beautiful friendship as well. Yeah. Support and love, which is so important. Um, Thanks so much. So if my listeners want to, they've heard all these great things about you, they want to sell your product, they maybe want to work with you in some way, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, so it's uh, Michelle at Boobus. So that's Boob and then A-S for Accessory Solutions, boobus.com.au. Or you can just reach out to me through Instagram, DM or Facebook Messenger or, yeah, anyhow you want to sign up to my newsletter, find out what I'm doing. I'm actively working on my blog more this year. It used to be just a sporadic thing, but I'm going to be updating the blog weekly and then letting that go to the socials so that, um, yeah, the the website will be the place to go to, yeah. 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 solutions.com. Wow, it has been such a great hour or so getting to know you and your business and your mission and your vision. So before we wrap up, I'd love to know where do you see your business going in the future? In the future, I would um love, so this is this is the base of it. Yep. That's the base of it, but that's I want to make more accessories as well. So I've got the the boob clip and of course I've got the um stress boob. It looks so good. That boob looks so real. Like it, it's really real, isn't it? It's just the right size, isn't it? And they actually do come in larger. They make these in jumbo as well. This is like the seven centimeter one. Can but, I? Ask, um, what do guys when they pick it up? Do they get a bit embarrassed about it when they pick you it know up? You know what? Like it, it instantly. It's an instant stress reliever because they have a smile on their face and they're laughing. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's so much fun. You know what men are like? They're like little boys around boobs. So that's why I was like, I'd be interested to know when when they pick it up, are they like, oh, I'm squeezing, like all their fantasies come true. I'm squeezing a booby. <laughs> yeah. So my vision for the future is that not just only making the boob clip, but making other boob accessories to uh, give back to Breast Cancer Foundation or people that are on the streets doing the work, making the difference and doing it in, in the different countries that I mentioned. So not just an Australia business, a worldwide business. I'm starting with four countries right now, but, you know, hopefully could be a lot more, could be a lot more accessories and could, you know, make a massive difference. I would love it to make a massive di- difference to breast cancer. You already are making a massive difference. So thank you. You all, you've you started this. You. You're already doing it right now. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah. So it's been such a pleasure to have you on here. And please, anyone with contacts around the world, this is a message for you. Just put Michelle's details in front of your boss. I know some of my contacts do work in the medical field. So all it takes is one person that knows one person and just support this great cause because all of us um, are affected by And men get breast cancer too. Yeah, that's right. It's not just for women. It's it's men do get breast cancer as well. So let's help our communities and help um, people that have passed and people that are still with us that have got to the other side to really, you know, make it that it's something that people get through and it's just like it's it's there's a cure and it's just an I'm, – I'm careful with my words, but it's something that can be um, – treated and then you carry on with life that's what I yes, you know the situation is yeah like some some people um obviously don't make it and that's that's very very sad but you know if everybody is working towards a solution then more people will make it mm, yeah and that's where community and support as you showed your lovely girlfriend that you were there for her every step of the way. And now look what you've done. You've created this business. Yes. Of that. And your amazing dream. So 
you know, who's who's to think what your next dreams, literally your next dreams going to be that's going to take you like more global than what you are now. I, no, I what the message is, listen to your dreams. <laughs> I had a bad one last night. So I'm, I'm la- that's why I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, my, I had a real interesting dream last night. So I'm kind of like, yeah, listen to your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> well, just find the message in that one maybe. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to thank you. Uh, join us today.